Hi, welcome to Online Worship with South North Baptist Church. Hope you're doing well today. Really great to have you with us. I'm filming this in our building, and just yesterday we finished our in-person communions for June. Chance to get together, to take bread and wine, to pray together in our building. But don't worry, we are planning more for July, so look out for details and make sure you book if you'd like to come together in person in our building and worship in that way. We began this video with some words from the Psalms, from Psalm 9, encouraging us that God is the Most High God. But that doesn't mean he's out of reach, because in his love, in his grace, he comes to us and he calls us to get to know him, to follow him, to be his people through the Lord Jesus. And so right now, wherever you are, I encourage you to take a moment. We're going to pray and then we're going to worship together with some songs of praise to God. Lord, we thank you you're with us wherever we are. We don't need to be in a special place. Wherever we're watching this, you can encounter us by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that you died and rose again. Come to us as we worship you now. Fill us afresh by your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.
As we said at the start, welcome. It's really great to have you with us today. If you're a regular part of our church, hopefully you're receiving our communications. We send regular emails, occasional text messages, and more. We'd hate for you to be missing out on things that might be important. And do log on to My Church Suite. We use a system called Church Suite to manage our data as a church, and then many churches do. And we did send out invitations quite a while back now to log on to a thing called My Church Suite where you can see previous communications and you can control your own data and preferences. Maybe you never saw that, maybe you lost your invitation for that. If that's the case, do let us know. We can easily send you another one. It's really important as we look forward, as we go into the summer, that we have correct information if you're part of our church or you'd like to be on our database. So do let us know if anything has changed. One of the things we often say on these videos is we'd love you to keep in touch. Yes, with us centrally, but with one another as the church here. Use technology and now the weather's hopefully getting better. We can meet together appropriately, safely, according to the guidelines. So let's do that. Let's meet up. Let's encourage one another. Let's bless one another. Use whatever ways we can to stay in touch. If you're watching this video for the first time, you're new to our church or you just like some more information, you've got questions, do get in touch with us. Full contact details are at the end of the video. But you can get social with us on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. Check out our website, southnorthbaptist.org. And don't forget, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any content. Thanks to everyone who gives financially to our church. One of the things the early Christians were known for was their generosity and we appreciate the sacrifice, the commitment of those that give to our church. If you'd like to give, here are some details now. And of course if you're part of our community and you're in need or you know, you know those that might be, do let us know if you think we might be able to help in some way. We're going to take some time now to pause and pray together. And our prayer uses the word stop, where each letter reminds us of what we're going to pray for. And so the first letter of stop is S. We're going to say sorry to God. Father God, we want to begin by saying sorry. We remember, even this week, we haven't loved you or loved others as we should. We've done wrong. Maybe by mistake, maybe deliberately going our own way. We've caused hurt. We remember those things in quiet now. We ask you forgive us once again. We thank you that we can come to you today. Second letter is T. We say thanks. Lord God, we say thank you. As we watch this now, we say thank you for technology. Thank you for good gifts, every good gift that comes from you. Thank you for life and breath. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you died and rose again. We think now in quiet of other things we want to say thank you for. Oh, we pray for others. Father, we pray for those who are unwell, those who are suffering. Pray for those with COVID and other illnesses, those who are worried and sad, those who have lost loved ones. We hold before you people, situations we know of now, personally, nationally, internationally, things that are on our hearts. We give them to you in the choir. and we say please we pray for ourselves lord we pray for ourselves however we're feeling right now whether we're looking forward to this week to today to what's coming up and beyond whether we're filled with fear whatever is on our hearts and minds give us your peace your comfort your strength may we know your patience and your grace whatever we're longing for now meet with us by your holy spirit in the name of jesus 
Lord, if we need healing, if we need comfort, if we need guidance, Lord, speak to us in the choir, we pray. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of the Lord's wrath. He has driven me away and made me walk in darkness rather than light. Indeed, he has turned his hand against me again and again all day long. He pierced my heart with arrows from his quiver. I became the laughing stock of all my people. They mock me in song all day long. He has filled me with bitter herbs and given me gall to drink. He has broken my teeth with gravel. He has trampled me in the dust. I have been deprived of peace. I have forgotten what prosperity is. So I say, my splendour is gone and all that I had hoped from the Lord. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. Let him sit alone in silence, for the Lord has laid it on him. Let him bury his face in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him offer his cheek to one who would strike him and let him be filled with disgrace, for no one is cast off. By the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love, for he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to anyone. Good morning, everybody. Last week, Pete began a new series called Faithful God and spoke to us from the book of Deuteronomy about a song that God gave his people through Moses a song that they were to learn to remind them of what God had done for them, declaring his faithfulness to them. And the song gave a picture of God as a rock, a God who was always the same, a faithful God, a just God. And our passage today, in a sense, is the result of God's people not being faithful to their God. He hadn't moved or changed, but they had. The Book of Lamentations is probably one of the least well read in the Bible. It's short, only five chapters, but much of it is hard to understand, especially when not read in the context of the history of God's people in the Old Testament. But our passage today does contain some of the most well known verses in the book, the basis of a number of well known songs we sing in church and also includes the words of our church theme for 2021, great is your faithfulness. The book of Hebrews in the New Testament tells us that the word of God is living and active. And that is the whole word of God, not just the passages that we find easiest to understand. Other books, especially in the Old Testament, can be difficult for us. But I think that all of them have what I call jewels hidden in them, and they are worth looking for and reflecting upon. I wonder how many of you have found yourselves in a situation where something you thought would never happen did, or something totally unexpected happened. And I don't mean winning the lottery or something like that, but something awful. We can perhaps think of that awful tsunami on a Boxing Day some years ago, of other massive natural disasters, of pictures in the media of the results of wars, of this terrible COVID pandemic. No one saw that coming. And for me, one of those times was the 5th of August, 
2010 when I was working in Kabul. And that was always dangerous enough. But we were woken up early one morning to be told that eight of our friends and colleagues, six expat and two Afghan, had been brutally killed on their way back from a medical camp way up north in an isolated part of the country. They were killed by extremists because they were known to be Christians. And that was something I'll never forget and remember them especially each August. And what is our response to such things, especially as Christians? Do we weep, shout at God, ask why? Do we want to pray, but feel as though our words go no higher than the ceiling? That's if we have words. And all of these were my reactions, and I know of my friends there too. And this book of Lamentations is the author's response, and we don't know for sure who that author was, to a catastrophe that had come upon God's people. They had lost all that gave them meaning. Jerusalem, their holy city, the temple, the symbol of God's presence with them, their freedom. The year was 587 BC and they were being taken captive to Babylon. They had thought that as God's people they were inviolate, that although God had warned them, he wouldn't actually carry out his promise of punishment. So let's look at three things that struck me from this passage. And firstly, God's punitive ways. Way back in the history of God's people, after he had rescued them from slavery in Egypt, God gave them commands to live by, to show that they were different from the nations around them. And in Deuteronomy chapter 28, God through Moses gave them lists of blessings if they obeyed his commands and consequences, punishments if they didn't. And Pete mentioned that last week. And it wasn't long before they disobeyed, time and time again. And God gave them chance after chance after chance. He sent prophets to warn them and they would repent and turn back to him. And then they would disobey and sin again until it was as though God said, enough. And this is where we come in. The awful catastrophe that God allowed to come upon his people that the author of Lamentations is grieving over. But this should not have been a surprise to them. God had given them plenty of opportunities to avoid this. And what God had allowed to happen to his people was not only punitive, but purposeful. He wanted to bring them back to himself into a new relationship, penitent and trusting. And verse 40 in this chapter says, let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the Lord. And God wanted this not just from the writer, but from all his people. And there was light at the end of the tunnel. God limited their captivity to 70 years and then he promised to bring them back to their own land. And then secondly, God's great faithfulness. These verses are worth reading again, particularly um, the first few. So from verses 21 to 24, yet this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. As I said before, these are probably the most well-known verses in the book, and there are some well-known songs based on them. And almost certainly the most well-known one is, Great is your faithfulness, O God, my Father. And so at possibly his lowest point the writer has reached, and precisely at the centre of this book, there is a turning from the suffering and hopelessness he is facing. They do not have the last word. His faith is rekindled when he thinks of a God whose very character is steadfast faithfulness, love and mercy. When all seems lost comes the realisation that God hasn't changed. He is near. His faithfulness is so great. His compassion comes anew every morning. His steadfast love continues, and in the midst of such mind-crushing catastrophe, 
the writer recognises this hope. Today we know that grief doesn't follow a straightforward course. There are moments of deep despair and darkness, but as in this book, there are shafts of light. Sometimes God seems a million miles away, but at other times we recover a sense of his presence and receive comfort. Many listening today or at other times will have experienced the truth of that, so hold on. And we also know that one response to grief is anger, but that is a temporary respond to a particular set of circumstances. Maybe for us, the loss of a loved one during this pandemic. And here, the author is experiencing the results of God's people's sins. In one of the letters in the New Testament, of John's letters, he tells us that God is love. And the writer to Hebrews tells us the Lord disciplines those he loves and he chastens everyone he accepts as his child. And that sounds quite hard, doesn't it? Now God chose his people in the Old Testament times. Why? Deuteronomy tells us, the Lord did not set his affection upon you or choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples, but it was because the Lord loved you. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is a faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Moses was speaking these words to the second generation of God's people to go through the wilderness and they were just about to enter the promised land. And now many years later, the writer of Lamentations is telling these people who were going through so much suffering that theirs was the same God, the same faithful God, and he would bring light into their darkness and an end to their suffering, just as he does for us today. And then thirdly, God's never failing compassion. My dictionary says that this word means a sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings of other people. And here the writer can confirm in verse 22, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Yes, the people are going through an amazing catastrophe torn from their land, their city, their temple, but all is not lost. And verse 31 tells us, for people are not cast off by the Lord forever. Though he bring grief, he will bring compassion, so great is his unfailing love. For he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to any human being. And another prophet, Hosea, said to the people, Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. There was, as I have said, a purpose to God's punishing his people to bring them back to himself. A while ago, I read a definition of compassion that I've never forgotten. An emotional response, which always leads to a caring action. And that emotional response isn't enough. There must always be action to affirm that. And God's compassion way back in the Old Testament and now is always seen in what he does. He saw the sufferings of his people in Egypt and he brought them out. Through his people's wanderings in the desert, he provided for them. And always when his people were in difficult situations, even if it was because of their sin, and they called out to him, he heard and he answered them. And now in the midst of the suffering that this writer is going through from his enemies, his own people and from God, he says in verse 21, yet this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. He believes that God's judgment, because that is what this is, is not God's last word. God's compassion triumphs over their suffering. God's greatest judgment on sin is seen in the New Testament. God's son crucified to pay the price of our sin, not just his greatest judgment, but his greatest act of compassion. 
John 3, 16 says to us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life, gave him to give up his life for us. And his people today who are suffering in any way can trust God and remember these words. His compassions are new every morning. The book of Lamentations is sometimes compared to the book of Job because it's about suffering. And like the book of Job, we're not given answers to that suffering. But one writer puts it well when he says, I have not found complete answers. Lamentations does, however, give us language in which we can express our own grief and pain. When we are bereaved, violated, beleaguered by questions that strike at the root of our faith, or in the depth of depression, here are words that we can make our own. And in doing so, we can begin our journey back to the God who knows our sufferings. So we've looked at God's punitive ways, God's great faithfulness, God's never failing compassion. And this is not only the God of the Old Testament, the God of the Book of Lamentations. This is our God today too. His character has not changed. Hebrews tells us he is the same yesterday, today and forever. And so we can trust him in the midst of whatever we're going through today. Trust in our great, our faithful, our compassionate and our unchanging God.
until the end of our worship today. Hopefully something has resonated with you, struck you, maybe even challenged you in some way as we've spent this time together. As we draw to a close, I'm going to pray a blessing. Let's pray together. May we know the blessing of the Father, the faithful God, whose mercies are new every morning. May we know Jesus, the faithful one, who shows us truly what the Father is like. May we know the Holy Spirit, your presence with us, filling us, leading us, guiding us each day. Amen. Even now, why not think of someone you can make contact with, you can connect with. We'd love to hear from you. Have a great week. We're back on this channel for our midweek thought on Wednesday. God bless. Have a great week and take care.